Then you know. You know, too. That's why you're here. I don't know anything. That's why I'm here. I've been living in a nightmare for days. I'm almost glad you found out. Helen wasn't alone on that trip. She called me from Crosswell. She was unhappy. She told me she had been able to persuade her friend Judith to go along Tell with me it. all the facts. The other night, I received a phone call. A woman who claimed she was Helen. But the voice, the voice wasn't hers. She told me she was saved by a miracle at the last moment. Just before the gas tank exploded, she was thrown out of the car while her friend Judith was trapped in the wreckage. Helen said she got away from the car before the explosion. She ran and kept on running. The body that burned in the car was Judith's. I begged her and pleaded with her to come and see me. But she, with that terrible weeping voice, she told me she couldn't come. In time, I think you and I will understand one another equally as well as Rhonda and I did. Theo, Rhonda and I spent many intimate hours in this house together. Intimate hours? Like those of last night, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy it? Me, yes. But I don't know whether Theo did. Oh, he did. Theo's a little peeping Tom. He enjoys these situations. It's the only thing that makes him get excited. I don't know, though. I got the impression it was my fault. He's a very sensitive boy, and I hope I didn't upset him. In the art of lovemaking, Theo is not exactly a Don Juan. It wasn't your fault. You're a really wonderful girl. And I'm sure that between the two of us, we can make something of it. And then the three of us will really be able to enjoy ourselves. Enjoyment without reservations of any kind. Make yourself at home. Apart from someone soaking up my whiskey, who are you? Dr. Murdoch sent me. Marilyn Grant was my wife. If you're not telling me the truth, you'd better get out of here. The place is crawling with cops since Diana's murder, so don't dare touch me. No need to be afraid. I won't harm you. I came for your help. The police must want you for some reason. Yes, they think I'm the Ripper, but he's not true. I'm looking for him too. I don't see what I can do for you. I've no desire to get mixed up with the law. You must help me, Lulu. You knew Diana and Marilyn well. Some man was seen with them both. Oh, who could keep track of the men they saw? You know what our work can be like. Hello. <gasps> Good evening, Your Honor. <laughs> Giovanna just got in from Florence this morning. Giovanna, you remember the one with the funny little scar? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Tomorrow? Oh, tonight, well, I... Uh... Well, she's very tired, poor girl. She's had an awfully rough day. Yes, marvellous. Till tomorrow, then, Your Honour, and get plenty of rest now, Your Honour. Good night, Your Honour. I really am kind of tired, Aunt Millie. Think I'll turn in, OK? It's nothing like it was, Giovanna, my dear. Now all my customers have money, and the prices are going up daily around here. <laughs> Sleep well, darling. Now, tomorrow's going to be a big day. Today, we shall discuss the great Giotto. Giotto. Can someone tell me why Giotto is such an important figure in Italian painting? Giotto has often been called the father of perspective in art. Together now, perspective art. Miss, may I leave? Bobo cut a real stinker. Beg your pardon? Are you crazy or something? <laughs> it's not true, Miss. So you're wrong, Professor Lassin. Frank understood. He begged me not to do anything. He'd suffered enough without the story turning into a dirty public joke. And that's what you're trying to make it, isn't it? Oh, yes, you're evil enough for that. First of all, you corrupted Frank. Turned him into a lost soul. Hopeless and lost. That's what killed him. I didn't corrupt Frank. I'm not the one that turned him into a lost soul. 
Have you ever tried to get beyond your own silly little world and your own selfish little conventions? Your preaching is not going to help you, Professor. I prefer just to keep my own silly little world. I don't think having death on my conscience would be better. It was me that found her, you know, this morning, very early, at 8 o'clock, when I came to do the cleaning, like always. Oh, I, I, I nearly died of fright, you know. And the police, they kept me for hours asking me all sorts of questions. But what could I tell them? I mean, what do I know? Just think it hasn't been half an hour since they took out the body. Poor Amanda. Who could have done it? A maniac. Who else? It's always a maniac and they never catch them. Where was she found? In the bathroom. Come on, I'll show you. There's all that blood all over the place. I'm going to try and clean it off now, but I'm getting out of here before it gets dark, you know. This is a special camp, ladies. You will remain here until the camp commander has decided what other destinations, definite ones, to send you to. Some of you will have the opportunity of working for the Third Reich, but this privilege will be given only to those of you who pass the selection. For no reason are you to leave the block you have been assigned to. Any kind of relationship with the guards will be severely punished. Anyone who tries to escape from the lager or organize escape will be immediately shot. The reports of the prominent on your behavior will be most important. 